within the last year you've made sixty five thousand dollars off of selling yep. beats online yeah okay so the point of this interview is to figure out how you did that so we can educate the other producers who are watching this who, who want to get to that point of making that kind of money selling beats online so mac 11 beats.com is the website 11 is spelled out and it looks like your website is independent it's not it's not like a beat stars pro page it's not a uh, Airbit or track train integrated uh plug in nothing like that right yeah independent yeah what made you decide to, to build a website from scratch and how what have been the challenges and benefits of that so um pretty much you know um when i started i started posting a soundcloud years ago mm. you know i think it was around maybe 2016 2017 i started posting a soundcloud and uh you know, I did that for a few years, probably until 2020 ish. And one day I was like, man, I was like, you know, I really want to get my own website. So it's like I don't because, bro, I had to, you know, get beats. Every beat somebody wanted to buy, I'd have to go and get them out myself, tracked out myself and all that. It was just so much work. I'm like, man, I think a website would be best. And I didn't want to go through beat stars because I tried beat stars before. And it's like, you know, I didn't really make much sales. And then. When people are on beats, start listening to your beats. I feel like they can get sidetracked going to other, you know what I'm saying, pages and stuff like that. So it's like I want to do my own thing, my own Mac11beats.com, not slash like Beatstar slash Mac11beats or whatever. Yeah, if if you, I always recommend producers if they are going to use something like a Beatstars or an Airbit to get their own website and then integrate it there. Because yeah, you're right. If you use their marketplaces, then it'll it'll recommend other producers so i actually messed up for a while and was putting marketplace links in my youtube videos and then people were contacting me being like i want to get this beat i'm like that that says tuna beats. That what do you say that's not me <laughs> so i had to figure that out that was on me uh but yeah in would you say 2020 is the year that you really started taking selling beats online seriously yeah, like I've always sold beats since like 2017 ish. Uh, I think I started making beats around 2011, 2012. My first set was like 2017. And then I quit my job uh, in 2020 ish, August 2020 ish, something like that. Uh, or about a year and a half ago. So it might have been later than that, you know, but. Um, some, if it somewhere was a year and there. a half ago, that was more like. 2022, 22, yeah. 22, 21 ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, All right. Okay. So let, let, yeah. let me pick up on that because this is important. I read comments all the time from producers who either ask whether the online beat selling marketplace is too saturated or I'm being told by them that it's too saturated and that anyone, you know, specifically me, anyone who says it's possible to make a living off selling beats is a liar. You actually, this is why this, and we've never spoken before. Um, yeah. well, just left a comment saying that you made 60. I'm like, I need to talk to this guy because yeah. people are saying what you have done is impossible. Clearly it's possible. I know it's possible, but I, I like talking to people who are. No, nah, no, nah, nah, for sure. You know, um, for me, like it's, you know, it's the, the favor of God on me too. You know, like, it's like, you know, I got to put him in there because it's like I I had faith, you know, praying to God that this will work out. And it, it did, you know, so it's like when I quit my job, I probably had like less than a thousand saved up. And, you know, I'm the only one in the family paying rent. I got my son and my wife take I got to take care of. So it's like I really took a big leap in doing it. But it's like it worked out for sure. I just stuck to the grind and uh, I probably doubled or tripled my clientele, you know, since I quit my job. So it's like. I really have faith in it and it's definitely possible, you know, so. All right. What make, cause that sounds terrifying. I, I, when I quit all my jobs, I had a, yeah, I, yeah. a thousand saved up. What made you do that in spite of, you know, better judgment? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I've always hated working jobs. Like I know, like I'm a, I'm a pretty smart guy, you know, like I could work pretty much anywhere if I, if I wanted to, but it's like, I was miserable in most places. Like, during the time I was working at a factory, working like seven days straight, 12 hour shifts. I was on one week off another week. 
you know, so it's like seven days straight that I'm all seven days. But it's like during that week that I was resting, it just sucked, like, because it went by so fast and it's I was just miserable. So I woke up one night. I couldn't even sleep. I remember somebody hit me up and a lot of people hit me up for custom work. So this dude hit me up for a custom beat and I couldn't sleep. I'm like, I had to be at work. I had to get up at like four in the morning. I, I just couldn't sleep. I told my wife, I said, you know, uh, I said, I think I'm just going to go ahead and quit my job and try to do this full time because I was already making probably 800 to 1500 a month, you know, when I was working full time selling beats. And I'm like, if I don't try, you know, it's never going to happen. I'm like, I always talk about it. And uh, during the time I, I went to um, in Atlanta, there's a um, a record or a label, you know, the Winter Circle. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. Cash Johns and them boys, shout out to them. Uh, I was talking with Cash pretty close in those days, and he was just like, you know, he he gave me the the you know inspiration to be able to do it. Like, so I ended up quitting my job, and it's just it worked out, you know. The narrative I hear from a lot of people is, I can't quit my job. I have kids, or I have a wife, or I have a house, or I have mouths to feed. That kind of thing. You had all of that, and you still, yeah, you still took that chance. Yeah, because it's like this This life is like it's gone in the vapor, you know, it's like I'm not about to waste 10 more years working and being miserable and worst comes to worst. I'll be late a month on the rent, you know, like uh, I'll be late. If, if I tell my wife, if it don't work out, I'll get another job. The job's easy to come by. I'll get another job, but I'm going to try it. And like I remember the during the first week, I was still waking up early just because I was like, if I could wake up early for my job, I'm going to wake up early for myself to make beats and grind it out and stuff. So I remember one day, like the first big breakthrough I had, I think I made like $700 from like five in the morning to like 12 in the afternoon, like seven hours on the computer. I was just banging out beats and posting them up. And uh, a lot of people were reaching out to me and I made like 700 during that day. I said, yo, this is really possible. Like I felt like a wolf outside getting meat, you know what I'm saying? Like for himself, like bringing it for the family. I'm like, this is definitely possible. So, and I kept going it just kept going like that, you know, snowballing. And your wife supported that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Cause okay. right. Shout yeah. Her. Right. Yeah. Shout out to her. Cause right now, you know, uh, we're in the process of dealing with her, um, with her getting her situated. Cause she's not able to work or stuff like that right now, you know, her legal status and all that. So, she was like, it's on you if you want to do it. You know, you know what you got to do. And, you know, if, if it don't work out, mm -hmm. she just she had faith, though. Yeah, I think faith is is key because I don't think any of us, when we start making music as a potential career, know for certain. We don't have any verifiable proof that in one year, two years, three years, 10 years, we're going to be in a position of financial stability or financial independence because no one can predict the future. All we can really do is have faith in ourselves and have faith in that journey and, and stick with it. Um, yeah. Thanks. And there's, there's a, there's a lot to discuss. So you're selling all these bees. Where are these customers coming from? How are you finding them? So over the years, you know, I've uh, built a strong, a lot of people tell me too, you know, when I tell them like, yeah, I'm doing these numbers. You're like, man, it just don't make sense because your YouTube ain't it. Like you don't have a lot of followers on YouTube. Yep. You're not really. And YouTube is like one of the least. I probably sold one beat through YouTube in my whole career. You know, it's like, so wow. I don't really even post on YouTube. Like when I first quit my job, I was posting. I started posting, but it's like, I guess I could be more, you know, start posting again to there. But it's like, I really the main fan, ba fan base is like through either IG people who hit me up on IG or, you know, Facebook pretty much like those two things are like my bread and butter for me. How do you attract them? Cause obviously they're not just finding you. How, how are you making yourself accessible to them? Yeah. So, um, every day, you know, I'll be grinding it out and posting videos of my beats or posting snippet of my beats. And I'll pretty, I'll probably have about, 100 to 200 clients right now you know who who are hearing these every day and they'll just reach out hey bro i want this beat or you know um so and so told me about you bro uh, where can i check your beats out like it's word of mouth too like you know word of mouth travels like crazy so if you work with the artists and most artists i work with they're independent you know so it's like 
they tell their independent friends about me. So they check me out and they're like, hey, man, I, I really like your beats. You know, um, can you do like they'll, they'll reach out for bundle deals for me or so and so like custom work and all that. So with Facebook and IG, obviously, they're owned by the same company, uh, but their algorithms have changed quite a bit. The SEO has changed. There was a time when Facebook, you couldn't even post video to. And more recently, they've adapted to the short form content with the reels and with the, the Facebook videos with hashtags and all that. And it's, it's searchable now. There's a crazy algorithm. How are you taking advantage of that? How are you navigating that to make your content reach as many people as possible? Well, that's another thing too. Like, I really know I need to start stepping it up because honestly, I, I've probably paid three dollars in the past year for ads and uh, sponsor videos. You know, so it's like I know I could be doing that better too, probably. But man, it's like I'm really just posting posting the beats and sending them out to people. You know, on there. So you're not using out. you're not using specific hashtags or or mm -mm. uh how are you posting them? Are you posting reels? Are you posting them directly to post? What's the strategy there? So do you know uh, the app iMovie for the yeah, uh, yeah. iPhone? Yeah, yeah, I'll just, I'll create an iMovie and just post it to my page on there. Okay, so not even a reel, just right in, in the, in the like a tr uh, classic status update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll usually just put like beats on the title, like get at me for beats, this, that, and that, you know. Be, I, I need to start doing that. I need to try because I, I try with uh with reels and with stories and that kind of thing. And, and you know, I get a good response. Um, but you got to figure every single platform now, as far as I can tell, has that option. You yeah. Know, Instagram has multiple ways to post video and audio content. Facebook has multiple ways to post video and audio content. Twitter. Why well, I'm not calling it X. It's Twitter for life. But. You know, I, I, I'm thinking of myself having this conversation with you. I'm being inspired to expand more. Like you were saying, you know, you're doing well, but you could always do better. So yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that content can live on so many different platforms and you never know who is going to attract, even if it, it looks like it flops. Cause that's the other thing too. If, if someone were to, to Google your following or something like, man, those numbers are low. Same with my YouTube but both of us are making a living selling beats. So yeah. a lot of, I think, people's fear comes from this assumption as to the correlation between numbers and sales, which isn't the case. No, nah, yeah, that's, that's a, a lot of people try to call me out like, man, it can't be like, that's cap, you know, but I'm like, it is what it is, you know, like, like I said, a lot of people want me to like tell my secret, but it's like, it's, it's no secret, you know, to me, it's just, you got to have your fan base, obviously, you know, and you just got to grind, stay making beats and, you know, um, just work. So when people reach out to you, how do you retain them as customers? How do you make them come back? What kind of experience do they get working with you? Um, obviously, you know, I try to give them good prices and, um, I notice a lot of producers, they'll get mad with people, you know, for, like they said, I, I saw this one guy posting a comment. He's like, a lot of uh, artists just want to be friends nowadays. They don't want to make music, which is, is true, but you gotta, you gotta treat people, make them feel like, you know, make them feel important, you know, make, make, give them good customer service and make have that personal relationship with them, you know? So they're going to want, like, I, I can't tell you how many people are like, man, like you're my go-to producer, bro. Like, cause they feel that relationship, you know, between us. Yeah. What are some ways you do that? How, how do you make a person feel like you actually care? And it's not just a transaction for you. Um, They'll, they'll send me snippets back of the song and, you know, I'll, I'll send them a voice recording like, Hey man, like what I think about it or how you could do better, or, you know? And then I'll, I'll even reach out to him sometimes like, hey, bro, uh, long time, no talk. You know, I hope everything's been good with you. Um, and then just hit him with it. And I got more new beats posted up, you know, uh, this that, and that. But, you know, you just got to have that relationship, you know, with people. 
have you ever just randomly jumped in DMs and been like, yo, I got beats for you to buy? Yeah, yeah, that don't work most of the times, so, you know. Oh, okay. uh, and I, I've also done it before, you know, but it's like people just look at it or they'll be like, all right, cool, thank you, man. And then uh, I've even done it before, and then they actually come back, they're like, hey, bro, so-and-so told me about you. And I'm like, yeah, I reached out to you a while back. Like, look up in the in the chat, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, man, I was busy in those days. But it's like, for me, it's, it's a lot of word of mouth, like I said, that they end up coming back or, you know, coming to me. 